here we have an Asus laptop that came in for no power. We already disassembled the board and I was notified by Big Boss that the charging port may be what's wrong with this board. Let's take a look. He measured for 19 volts, but 19 volts was not present. And look at the port. I do see damage on the port, as you can see. And I have a replacement port right next to me. Let's take a look and see how it should look like. See? The plastic piece inside is missing and the charging cable is probably not making a connection between positive and ground. Let's go ahead and replace it. We have four more Asus laptops that we need to fix. Maybe I'll do more than one Asus laptop in this video. We'll see. If we take a look at the port here, we have how many pins? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Four, two, and two, eight. The easiest way to remove this connector is to apply low mount solder on all those pins. Let's get this done quick so we can move on to do something else. And I just want to show you that we can remove this port, this connector, without even applying hot air. Look at this. We need to put something under the board so we can give room under the board for that connector to fall down. Oh, here. It fell down. As soon as I pulled the board up, it fell down. I did not need to push on it. And that's the beauty of low melt solder. The magic of low melt solder. I keep saying this. This is one of the best low melt solder in the market. And you can find it on our site. Just log into northwestfix.com, click on shop, and search for low melt. The package comes like this with six sticks. It will last you a long time because a tiny bit of low melt goes a long way. And the soldering is a lot easier when you have low melt. It doesn't get stuck in the holes. Let me apply some flux because the area is dry here and flux helps with the flow of solder, makes life easier. It's not that it just makes life easier, it's required. Okay, and whatever is inside the hole is probably very soft, you see? Sometimes your eyes will play tricks on you. Let's clean up and then we can solder the replacement connector. I removed that connector from another Asus motherboard and I have a couple of them ready on my bench here. And now for the replacement connector, make sure that this is the replacement one and not the original one that we just removed because I've done that mistake before. I desoldered the connector and then I wanted to grab the replacement one and I ended up soldering the same connector back on the board. And when I came to test, I realized that I had the same connector. What can you do? Sometimes mistakes like that can happen. Yeah, and it looks like this connector is not the same one. It's a different one. Look at this. Why are they changing the connectors? They just have to make it a little bit taller or the pins a little bit longer. So they can give the person who's working on it a hard time. Why did they find the need to change the connector size? From smaller to bigger or bigger to smaller. That's Asus for you. What can you do? And people are still buying Asus laptops.
and it looks like that connector is a unique species because I cannot find a similar one looking at seven Asus donor boards I have right next to me. None of them have the same connector. Yeah, it's a different connector. This one is a different connector. This one, I already used the connector. And this one, I already used the connector. So we do not have a connector for this laptop because Asus decided to change the connector on us. We got the laptop today and I was hoping to work on it and finish it today, but what can you do? I'll put it on the side until we get a port for it. But the good news, we have another board to work on. Let me put this on the side. We have four Asus laptops that we need to work on today. So one of them I'm gonna put on the side until we get a port for it and let's work on this one here. Let's go ahead and measure those MOSFETs and see if we have a short. And today I'm using a new pair of multimeter probes. And those are amazing, look at this. Look at how fine those probes are. Anytime I'm using something from our shop, I like to display it when I'm making a video so you know what you're buying. I can even measure the tiniest component on the board, the 105 size SMDs, without any issues. Let's measure the drain of this MOSFET in diode mode. And we have a short. See? Quick. Nice and quick. We have a short circuit. And right now, I'm going to inject voltage at the short. And we're going to monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot on the board. And then maybe, just maybe, I'll include one more ASUS repair in this video if possible. And right now I'm gonna inject 1.3 volts at the drain of the MOSFET. Go to our thermal camera. And let's see. Wait a minute. I just noticed that this current sense resistor was tempered with. Look at this. Look at the solder on this current sense resistor and it's crooked. And uh, now I see that we have a solder bridge between this and this. I mean, what's going on here? This board was worked on before. I did not realize that until now. Let me do a quick visual inspection to see what type of Hiroshima we are working with or if I'm gonna continue working on this board. I knew it. I knew it. Signs of flux right here. And it looks like this chip, this memory chip was reflowed or was replaced or whatever the case may be. And I already do not feel like working on this board anymore. Not only this chip, but this one, this one, this one, this one. And whoever worked on it is just Randomly guessing, let me reflow this one or let me replace this one. I highly doubt that he replaced those chips, but it looks like he reflowed those chips thinking that maybe one of the solder balls under the chip is cracked or broken. And that's never the case. Never ever the case with Asus laptops. Most likely it's going to be a waste of time. More flux here, more flux here. There's a 90% chance of fixing a board when the laptop comes directly to us. But when something like this is happening, I would say 10, 20% chance at max. All right, so we know the board was worked on before. I think this repair or this no fix will be a quick video. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. I'm gonna clear the bridge here. Then we're gonna inject voltage, monitor the board under a thermal camera, see what gets hot. If we're able to figure it out, great. If not, then we're just gonna send this back to the customer as a no fix. We are not charging for the repair attempt fee. We disassembled it, we worked on the board, we're gonna reassemble it, we're gonna package it, all that stuff takes time. And then the customer is gonna pay for return shipping and expedited service if he chose that option. I wanna see what the customer wrote. Did he work on this board by himself or did he take it to another shop or what's the story with this board and let's jump over to our thermal camera 
inject voltage and see what gets hot on the board. I do see heat on the memory chips, VRAM chips of the GPU. The board just went from something that could have been fixed to something that we're not going to work on anymore. And I would not be surprised if the person who worked on this board tried to reflow the GPU while those anchor corners are still on. Because look at the flux. Look at the flux under the GPU. That's probably what happened. The person tried to reflow the GPU without removing those. Nice. All right, so enough complaining. Let's go over what the customer wrote so we know what happened to that laptop. I tried to put thermal paste on the GPU and the VRAMs. After I did that, I closed up the computer and it did not turn on anymore. I gave it to a repair shop. They replaced parts and could not fix it. So the customer attempted to replace the thermal paste on the laptop. After he did so, the laptop would not power on. He took it to some random shop. And just like Mortal Kombat, they did a fatality on it, finished it. And then the laptop ended up in our shop. It's a no fix. We're going to invoice and mail this laptop back to the customer. We're going to be working on board number three. Big Boss disassembled another Asus laptop and the board is out. We're going to check and see what's going on with this board and if the board is fixable. Maybe we're going to have three unfixable boards in this video. And by the way, this board has a similar connector to the one that we first worked on, the first board that we worked on. But of course, we cannot remove a connector from one customer's board and put it on another customer's board. It doesn't make sense. So we're going to have to either order those connectors or we're going to have to find a donor laptop that we can extract that connector from. But for now, let's proceed with board number three. And this one came in for no power. Let's go under the microscope and see what's going on. The first thing I want to do is make sure the connector is good. What if we also have a bad connector on this one? I did not check the connector itself, but we're going to plug the charging cable. And then we're going to check on our multimeter if we have 19 volts going in. Check and see. And we have 19.76. Perfect. Disconnect the cable. And now there is a piece of circuit board that plugs in from here all the way to right here. And I'm interested in the drain of this MOSFET if we have a short meter in diode mode. And are we going to hear a beep? And yes, we have a short, short circuit. Very nice. Hopefully this board is a fix. Otherwise, we're going to have three unfixed boards in one video. Record. Let's inject voltage and monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what happens. Usually a short here is an indication that we may have a faulty MOSFET, a V-Core MOSFET. So if we inject voltage and go under our thermal camera, and what do we see? I see something right here. Let's inject voltage again. Right there. It's a MOSFET. We got it. That MOSFET want to play games. The component in question is this one here. Let's measure and see if we have a short. Using our amazing probes, the new probes that we have on the multimeter. Right here. And what do you know? We have a short. And this one, we do not. And the one next to it, we do not. And this one, we do not. And what's this? I see signs of flux here. Not another one. Okay. Let's be optimistic and hope that this will fix the problem. Okay. I did not look anywhere else on the board, but out of curiosity, let's look at the VRAM chips. Maybe the same shop worked on this motherboard. Who knows? And the board looks clean. No signs of flux anywhere. Okay, let's focus on this one. Let's remove this MOSFET, replace it, 
and hope for the best. Now I do not honestly know if we should have another MOSFET here, if that MOSFET was removed or not. Let's measure and see if we still have a short. And we do not. We do not have a short anymore. And we should be able to get a replacement from here. And we're gonna solder that MOSFET right here. We may need to solder two MOSFETs and not just one. That's what happens when somebody else tampers with the board. You have to guess. What did the other person do? And we're done with this one. Let's go ahead and solder one here. We do have a coil on top, so we must have a MOSFET here. We're not gonna have a coil on top if a MOSFET did not exist on the bottom here. That resistor won't escape. That resistor won't escape to the ninth dimension. It's not gonna happen. Those components do not understand that I can find them. And even if I cannot find them, I will replace them. Alright, so let's apply flux. So it's alright if those two bridge because both of them are using the same pads. So naturally they're bridging. And let's measure for a short again. Do we still have a short at the current sense resistor? And we are getting a reading of 0 0.34, perfect. And we do not have a short. So let's assemble the board and hope for the best. Okay, I assembled the motherboard. I have most of the cables connected. I did not include the heatsink. I just connected the fans because some other laptops do not like to turn on if you do not have the fans connected. So that's what I did. And the hinges are not connected. I just wanna see the laptop turn on. Let's plug the charging cable. I have the screen connected, I have the keyboard connected, I have the keyboard backlight connected, I have the fans connected, and on. Nothing. I just wanna measure the charger and make sure that the charger is supplying voltage. Because maybe when I tested with this charger, the motherboard had a short circuit and the charger went into protection mode, I think that may be the case. 19.78 volts. Let's plug the charger back in. And nothing is coming on. And I do not see anything hot on the board. Nothing. So what is the problem? Let's go over this quick. I have the charger plugged in. I wanna see if we are getting 19 volts in. Very strange. And we do have 19.78. And if we go all the way up here, and let's measure at the drain, 
of the second MOSFET, this one here, the one that we measured the short on, and I'm reading a zero. What about on source? I'm reading a zero. What about on source? Zero. What about drain? 19.78. So voltage is not passing through, or it could be that the MOSFET that we soldered, they shorted again because of a CPU issue, and that's why we are reading zero here. Let me unplug the charging cable. Let's go to the MOSFETs that we soldered right here. And let's measure to see if we have a short. Did those MOSFETs short again? Meter in diet mode. Measure this one. Whoa, we have a short. What about this one? This one is good. What about this one? This one is good. And this one is good. And this one is good. And this one is good. So all of them are good except for this first one here. Hmm. Let's go ahead and replace this MOSFET one more time. Just one more time and see what happens. And if we measure in diet mode, we do not have a short. Now, if after replacing the MOSFET, it shorts out after plugging the charging cable, that will tell us that we have a problem with either the CPU or PCH, in which case, we're going to deem this laptop a no fix. Let's desolder this donor MOSFET from here. But before we desolder it, let's measure it. Is this MOSFET good? And yes, this MOSFET is good. Let's go ahead and desolder it. And let's solder it on the customer's motherboard. And maybe that's why this board came here without this MOSFET, because the person who worked on it attempted to replace this MOSFET multiple times and it kept blowing. That's probably what happened. And if we measure now, do we have a short? And we do not have a short. 0 0.47 voltage drop and no short. The one next to it, we do not have a short. So let's plug in the charging cable and see what happens. So let's see. If we measure here at the current sense, we do not have 19 volts. Most likely the MOSFET shorted out again. If we measure here, we do have 19. If we measure here, we have zero. And of course, we're going to have zero here. Wow. We're going to unplug. And let's measure that MOSFET that we just replaced. Did it short to ground again? Wow. Short to ground. Short to ground. Again. We replaced that MOSFET twice, and both times the MOSFET shorted the ground. Right now, we're going to deem this laptop a no fix due to possibly a CPU problem or a PCH problem. None of the laptops that we worked on today were a fix. The first one we need to buy a connector for. The second one was a Hiroshima. And the third one is possibly a CPU or PCH problem. That's it. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it, even though None of the laptops were a fix. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.